want to get us started, I think we're, we're ready to go. Well, and for those of us joining us on the phone, um, despite the fact that we are two years into the uh, pandemic, there are still technical difficulties to be had. Um, good morning. The time is now 9.40 a.m. Today is Thursday, September 29th, 2022. This is a public hearing um, before the Massachusetts Gaming Commission. Um, I am Commissioner Jordan Maynard of the Massachusetts Gaming Commission. We are convening this hearing pursuant to Massachusetts General Law, Chapter 30A, Section 2. The commission will convene this hearing using remote collaboration technology. I will ask that attendees please mute themselves until they speak to help keep background noise to a minimum. Also, please note that the commission is recording this hearing. The purpose of this hearing is to offer any interested person or group an opportunity to comment on the commission's proposed regulations. Once we begin, anyone who wishes to comment on the proposal may state their name and be recognized. They may then proceed to offer their comment. The agenda today pertains to the following items. 205 CMR 13802, Licensee System of Internal Controls. The proposed amendment will establish a timed requirement for licensees implementation of a protocol or system of control when deemed necessary by the executive director. 205 CMR 138.05, Systems for Ensuring Employee Licensing. The proposed amendment will restore language that was initially missing from the regulation. 205 CMR 138.07, Floor Plans. The proposed amendment will establish that the Investigations and Enforcement Bureau is provided with up-to-date floor plans on a quarterly basis. Join the meeting. 205 CMR 138.62, Payment of Table Game Progressive Payout Wagers. The proposed amendment will establish that the Commission be notified of the protocols governing the equal division of progressive jackpots and reset amounts by licensee. After we hear comments, we will close this public hearing. The commission will then review the proposals, including consideration of any comments for final approval at, schedule, at a scheduled public meeting, which will follow this hearing on Thursday, October 13th, 2022. We will now hear comments on the proposals. I ask that any speaker please identify themselves before commenting. To help facilitate everyone's opportunity to comment and the use of technology to conduct this meeting, if you're accessing this meeting virtually, you may signify your interest in making comments by sending a note or raising your hand. That will not be the case um, today. Um, those features are available at the bottom of the screen. If you're dialing into this meeting, which we know we do have uh, folks joining uh, by phone. Join the I meeting. I will invite comments and make sure that everyone wishing to comment has that opportunity. With that, we will now open this hearing for comments. To come off mute, press star six. I do ask that you also identify which CMR you are commenting on. The floor is now open. Are there any comments? Hearing none. For anyone who's on the line, you can just enter start six or unmute on your phone if you're trying to unmute. I will give everyone just a second. Since we've had some technical difficulties, it's only fair that we give everyone a second. Okay.
Judith, what's the proper way to conclude this hearing, given that there are participants, but no comments? So this happens occasionally. Uh, folks do wish to kind of um, attend the hearing. However, um, maybe they're not quite prepared to offer comments. So what we could do is um, I'm more than happy to um, show the four regulations and the red line changes, if you like, and we can just kind of have a, a public discussion for our attendees to listen to. Um, I'm also happy to, I mean, technically speaking, we should keep this line open until the close of the hearing. So roughly uh, 10 a.m. or subsequently thereafter, seeing as we got started a bit late. Um, I'm happy to screen share those regs or even just, um, you know, the hearing notice up here. And then, you know, if more people join uh, before we close at 10 or if folks do ultimately wish to um, unmute at a certain point before the close of the meeting, that's that's fine too. But I think I just kind of holding this time is fine. I think sharing the regs is fine. Great. Okay. All right. Just stand by. The proposed regulation. Yes. Yes, certainly. Okay, we should be all set. I'm just gonna let me know how that, um, how the size quality is. I can always unzoom or resume. So here we are. I think that's perfect. Okay, so our first reg is our, obviously our cover sheet we're going through. We have our notice of public hearing and the short description of the regs that you already read into the record commissioner. Uh, our first reg is 138.02 and deals with our licensee system of internal controls. Um, the purpose of this regulations uh, amendment was to provide a more consistent time basis for when a gaming licensee will submit their internal controls uh, for approval or amendment to the executive director. So the legal division has gone down as a part of the reg review process and added in a time based requirement into section seven that deals with after uh, an amendment is approved pursuant to sections two and three of the same section of the regulation that a licensee submit uh, the internal controls to the commission and actually implement them within their establishment um, no more than 30 days from the date of the approval. Uh, so an internal control can cover anything from security to accounting procedures to um, auditing compliance matters. And so that the commission felt uh, strongly that you know anything that they ultimately received approval on should be implemented um, in a timely basis. And so we've gone ahead and just added that in there. As you can see, there's no strikeouts, there's no deletions. It's just simply adding in um, language to signify that a period of no more than 30 days should lapse from the date of the approval to the date of implementation. Next, we have, and forgive, this is just a page, a page break here. We have uh, 138.05 that deals with pursuant to um, employee licensing within the commission. So as a bit of background, uh, gaming licensee or gaming employees have to be licensed pursuant to commission standards. And so in looking over this reg as a part of the reg review process, we realized that some of the, reg the requirements listed under section two, one of them had been cut off. Um, we're unsure exactly how this happened or why, but in reviewing the regulations um, during the reg review process, one of the members of the IEB caught this um, and kind of flagged it as a Scribner's error. So we've gone ahead and added it into section J so that it fully states the date on which the information submitted in the port was compiled. Um, again, it's it's likely that it just got cut off in a publication or a republication of um, you know of a regulation, but you've gone back in and kind of added this language. So again, nothing deleted, but just re-added in. Next, we have uh, 138.07 that deals with a licensee's submission of floor plans within 138 as licensee system of internal controls. So as you can see, the floor plans have to be very, very specific and deal with a great number of things that are documented and detailed um, 
to scale uh, on a licensee's gaming floor, including within their establishment. And so we've gone in and again, similar to 138.02, requested that the licensee give the commission uh, updates to their amendments to the floor plan and their original floor plan um, on a much more frequent basis than had already been happening. So down here, and I've included the whole, the whole reg just so folks can get a chance to read it. Uh, it's also available on our website, I should pause and say that. Um, down here in section four, we've asked that an approved copy of the floor plans and any amendments thereto will be filed with the Bureau, that means the IEB, in the gaming establishment every three months or upon the request of the Bureau. So you can see similar to the other two amendments I've already walked you through. Um, again, we have no deletions, nothing is necessarily changing. The commission is just simply implementing a tighter timeline um, to these changes and asking that the licensee update uh, the IEB on a more frequent basis. So at this case, every three months or approximately 90 days, they update the, um, the internal IEB that's located within the, uh, within the gaming establishment of their floor plan so that the IEB can communicate that information to its agents and the GEU. Last but not least, we have 138.62, which pertains to the payment of progressive wagers um, at an establishment. So within the gaming industry, a progressive payout deals with um, payment of a large sum of money, also known as a jackpot across multiple tables in a gaming establishment, and in some cases across multiple gaming establishments. So here in the Commonwealth, they're just within one gaming establishment. So that could be um, the Encore Boston Harbor or the MGM Springfield. So in this case, um, the commission had asked licensees to prepare and submit as a matter of their internal controls, some kind of a protocol that would govern what would happen if two people sitting at the same or another table within the gaming establishment won a progressive jackpot at the same time during the same hand. So the current protocol is that whoever ultimately hits first, and it could be a nanosecond first, would receive the larger share of a jackpot. The commission has since, and at the advisement of the legal division, has since requested that the licensee instead implement a more equitable policy that would, would call for when you know, two people won a jackpot at nearly the same time, almost, instantane almost instantaneously, to split a progressive jackpot. Now I've been told by members of the IEB, this has never happened before that a person, two people or even three have won a jackpot or a progressive jackpot at the same time. So this procedure is actually more preventative than palliative at this point, but ultimately the commission feels that it's important to have some kind of procedure like this ready that will govern you know, when two people or more ultimately win a progressive what? a progressive jackpot at the same time. So that's what that is. And that's, that's our regs today. Again, you can see that there are no deletions or subsequent changes. We are instead adding more language into the, into the regulation to call for clarification. So pretty standard as a part of the reg review procedure and process. And yeah, we will bring these regs forward on October 13th for a final vote with the commission. Thank you, Judith. Oh, with my that pleasure. With that said, um, I want to again invite anyone who's joining us on the line um, to uh, comment. Uh, you can hit star six, as Crystal said, um, to get off mute. And uh, we are happy to take comments. Again, we'll keep the line open until 10 o'clock to ensure that we are meeting our obligations.
Okay, we are going to get ready to wrap this up. Again, I invite anyone who has any comments to please hit star six and make those now. With that, this concludes the hearing um, pursuant to Massachusetts General Law Chapter 30A, Section 2. Um, again, these draft regulations will come forward for a final vote of approval on October 13, 2022. Thank you. Thanks, Commissioner. All right, thank you, Dave. I think that about does it. All right, thank sounds you. good. I don't know if we needed to adjourn or anything or if we're just good to end. I think we're good to end. Okay, thanks so much. I'll get, once this recording downloads, I'll send it to you guys and figure out a way to either post it on the website or direct a link where people can get it. Awesome. I think if you want to put it directly under like where the hearing notice is, where it's currently living, I think that would be adequate. Um, and then at a certain time, we could probably move it to the to the archive section of the website, but I leave that to you. Okay, yeah. sounds good. <laughs> All right, well, thanks very much and have a great day. No problem. Thank you. Thanks, Commissioner. Thank you.